Hello. Okay, so my project is on the water. It's a water project. It's about it's pertaining to more towards all the controversy, the pros and cons of the whole issue with, with Calum's proposed diesel plant. Um, okay. So I'm gonna first start off by talking about what diesel um desalination is. And desalination is a process that turns water that comes from the ocean into and, and into drinkable water. Um, desalination is a process that leaves pretty much almost no elements in the water after fil filtration. In fact, minerals are often needed to be added to, back into the water to make it platable to drink. Um, desalination is a process that can last about 15 years. You know, it can only be done in coastal and inland areas, mainly coastal. If you're close to the ocean, there's benefits to desalination can occur. Um, it's a process, it's proven technology. There's already about thousands of desalination plants out there in the world today. So it's definitely proven technology of a, of a process that works, but there are definitely some cons to it. I'll get into it later. Um, in this picture, I'm just simply gonna describe to you this image. So in this image, um, water would be distracted from the, where the slant wells is, which is all the way to the left of this image. You'll see like a red thing going past Cabrillo Highway, which is right here, Highway 1. I don't know if you guys can see my arrow, but this is the slant wells right here. This is where the desalination plant is going to be. And... If you go down and then from here, it's going to go down the Del Monte Road. And then it's going to basically go go all the way through, going through the city of Marina into Monterey. Once the water is desalinated. Over here is a landfill, the sewage treatments right here. And 30 acres of compost windrows. Is right here in the desalination plants right here. Next slide. This slide is simply just wanted to, to, to show this slide so you guys can see the wiper waters that we have. You know, we have pure water in Monterey, we have aquifer storage recovery. You also have the Sand City, I believe. I think that just one in Sand City. Then Carmel River, you have Seaside Bassin. And if the desal plant is made, this is how much, this is about an approximation of how much it would be taking throughout the whole county. Um, so why is desalination bad? Is a question that a lot of you are wondering. So for one, the process is just very expensive, simply put. Um, and while it's very expensive, um, you're talking about, so last time the estimate was done, it was the diesel that was in 2017, it was a $298 million. But when you update it to the construction's cost index for 2018 to 22 to 2022, the number turned into 426 million bucks. And if you de decipher that difference, you get $367 million compared to the cost of pure water Monterey, which is only um, $59 million for the expansion, at least. Um, so here's some alternative processes. So if you think about, so I just mentioned pure water project. I'm going to expand more about this. So let me tell you about the pure water project. So the thing about the pure water project, it's... Um, it treats wastewaters to such a high quality level that we're able to drink it. Pure water, but the only thing is the pure water project is about 125 million bucks. So it's still much cheaper than what you'd be paying for if you were to do the desalination plant that Calan is proposing. But yeah, that's how much it costs. Only thing is Monterey Coast Water District and Monterey One Water got only about the $337 million of grants that came from state and federal government to cut 
that was coming into the community. 16 and 7 million um, was on the expansion, um, but they already landed about, they only landed about $50 million in state and federal grants, and they're still pursuing additional grants. The Pure Water Project, it uses a process called reverse osmosis, which is a filtration method used for the removal of molecules and ions from drinking water. And the second, uh, the other second alternative water supply is uh, the Reservation Road and Fort Ord desalination, Fort Ord diesel plant project. It, um, Marina Coast Water District was pioneered as the first diesel project in 1996 in in the areas and it was ran and ran all the way to 2003. The project is still over on Reservation Road facility in a Reservation Road facility. District staff are still reviewing that project and developing the engineering necessary to board and decide whether or not to restart the plant. Um, so there's a possibility that it's giving me an option for the thing. Um, the next slide. Also, a, a bad thing about diesel, about the diesel plant being built, it, it's already in an, an area that's industrialized. And as you can see in my other slide, it's on a disadvantaged community of people that basically are in fixed incomes, can't speak, they can't speak English, you know, mostly elderly people, barely making it, you know. It's not an area, in most 64% of people of color live in the area. It's not a place to really do a diesel plant, to be honest. And by the fact that the Calam was willing to do one, it's problematic. Seawater intrusion also a problem. I've been that's one reason why people are nervous because if this is coming from the ocean, there's possibility you know the process could fail or possibly can be bringing in salt or miss something you know. And since it, and the thing about the diesel plant, if it's built, it's going to interfere with other aquifers. So when it's built, it's going to interfere with Marina's groundwater basin and seaside groundwater basin and other aquifers. So it could technically, if the if, if the diesel plant has problems with it with its process of desalinating the water, it could technically contaminate the water, you know? So there's this debate like, okay, like is it to be built or should it not, you know? Because, you know, what if it's not right? And if it's interfering with the aquifers, the water can be contaminated and not be drinkable maybe even have some sort of chemical in it that could make it not good. Um, like Gal Morden said, who's current director of Marina Coast Water District stated on our website, no one's access to water should become a financial burden. You know, we, there's a lot going on in the world. The, word, the, the least we could worry about is water, okay? The least we could need to worry about is some water, okay? Um, According to Dave, uh, Dave Skoll, who's a general manager for Water Peninsula, Water and Calisto Water Management District, he mentioned that conserving water is the cheapest water. So there are other options for water. Apparently you can build it, but saving it is just a much more cost efficient, effective way. You know, um, it also can affect the snowy plovers. It can affect other um, um, animals that are in the, in the county, such as the Legless, California's legless lizard as well, you know, so it can also cause environmental damage as well as contamination to the water. And the reason why I'm showing this photo is because the Coastal Commission has tried to, it's weird because they approved the diesel plant being built, but Technically, going back to my other slide, they don't have the water rights to do this. You know, in order to build groundwater, you need ground, you need water rights. You can't just take groundwater out of the water without some sort of legal right or permission to do so. You can take water out of the ocean, not fine, but you can't just take groundwater. So right now, they don't have a legal pr protocol to do so. So they're not going. To, this process is going to probably take a while until they can get that process taken care of. Um, but the reason why I want to show these two pictures because the it, it showcases that the California Coastal Commission support supports 
they understand what's going on, but yet they are allowing this plan to be built. Kind of makes no sense, you know. And here's the other one, you know, saying the proposed Calan project also results in adverse coastal resource effects within the community of Marina that is already disproportionately burdened by many other industrial resources and would receive none of the benefits. There's a long history of government institutions allowing unwanted industrial developments to be concentrated in undeserved communities of color without their consent, proving yet another world perpetuate this discrimination in land use practice in Marina. So they kind of know what's going on. They know that the issue that Marina is kind of facing, but yet they just accepted a diesel plant. Kind of sounds a bit shady, don't you think? So, you know, here's one of the protests that kind of was occurring while the meeting was going on at the Coastal Commission. A lot of residents of Marina are not happy by this process being approved just because it's going to affect their, their affect Marina. It's going to be the effect of city that's already been industrialized and it is kind of unacceptable, you know? It's really unacceptable and, and they need to ch change that. And going back to the snowy plovers, like we have a lot of beaches in Marina that are pristine, natural, vast, and there's a lot of endangered species on them. And to be exact, the California Coast Commission reported that there's 14 of them in the city. So they're gonna be affected too, along with the fact it's gonna affect the city, the city Marina's residents. Here's some students. There were some students that spoke there about their opinions going against the water plan. You know, students from Marina High School. You had students from Girl Scouts. You know, one girl had to literally get a stool just to be able to talk, talk about her opinion. It's a serious issue. Um, and I try to get a clearer picture of this, but a lot of the pictures that was in this presentation came from a video or me taking it in person. So excuse if the pictures are not clear, but you know, yeah. Um, and thanks for my presentation. Thank you for hearing me out. I really appreciate it. Um, I mean, it's a lot, you know, but like anything else, you just gotta press through and keep trying to make it so. Take care. Thanks for hearing me out. You know, Merry Christmas coming up. Buy your gifts. You know, have a good time. Have a good day, y'all. Thanks for hearing me out. Really appreciate it.